Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Knit State of Mind podcast. This is episode 19. We're coming here, a beautiful fall day. It's fall here in the Bay Area, Saturday, November 14th. I'm Mm -hmm. Wanda. And I'm Heather. And you can find us on Instagram as Knit State of Mind. You can find me on Ravelry as Wadi Wat and on Instagram as Zest in Class. And I'm Heather T on Ravelry and Heather T on Instagram. So it's good to be back. Yeah, it's it's been, we've been going about every two weeks. Um, the time seems to fly, a lot going on <laughs> these days. And so... We welcome you back. Thank you for joining us for another episode. Thank you to our new viewers. We've noticed some new subscriptions. Um, And so thank you for just joining us on this journey and um, sharing in the knit state of mind with us. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do it. Yeah. Um, we actually normally we talk a lot in between uh, podcasts, but we've both been busy doing a lot of different stuff. So everything is going to be a surprise today. <laughs> I'm very yeah, I look for I, I mean, I see it looks like you have on a finished object. So yeah. Um, well, I'll start with that. So this is my Rainier sweater by Kate Gagnon Osborne of Kelborn Woolens, uh, made with Kelborn Woolens Scout in the graphite heather. And gray heather is the lighter gray. So I'll stand up and show you what it looks like. Um, I have a new setup today also because the light is not great with our autumn weather. So I gotta get used to that. So here it is. Um, I am loving it. It it came out a little bit longer than I thought it would, but other than that, I was able to block it to like the exact measurements for the size I was going for. Um, So I'm really happy with it. It looks wonderful. It's perfect for this season, a good transitional piece. Yeah, definitely. I definitely see myself wearing it a lot, like over a t-shirt or leggings or whatever. Um, Yeah, so I'm super happy with it. I made it exactly according to the pattern, even the colors that were called for in the pattern. The only thing, one thing I did different is um, you're supposed to use the same needle size for all the ribbing, the cuff, the hem, and the turtleneck. And when I used that needle size for the turtleneck, the neck just felt too constricting. So I did rip out the turtleneck and do it with a slightly bigger needle to give it a little more space. (laughs) But yeah, other than that, yeah, definitely. I recommend the pattern. It was very easy to follow and um, really fun. Knit up pretty quickly. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> what else do you have going on? I have a whole bunch of FOs. Do oh, you have any FOs? I do. Um, that's pretty much all I have. I wouldn't say a whole bunch, but I do have some. <laughs> that's almost all I have too. So I guess it's a week of FOs for us this week. Yep. Yeah. Um, Do you want to take turns? You want to show one? Yeah, I can dive in. So um, my latest FO is I have a hat. Um, Oh, sorry. That was kind of a shrill shriek, but I haven't seen this one. I I love it it better like that. Right. Uh huh. So I fell in love with this hat immediately when I saw it on um, Instagram. So it's, um, the Pappas hat by Knitting Nelly, and it's a part of the, oh, the Wisp collection from Farmer's Daughter Fibers. Um, she just released a, a, a booklet that has a lot of cool pow- patterns in it. So this uses, of course, since it's in her booklet, um, it requires Farmer's Daughter, farmer, farmer's daughter Fibers, but I didn't use her yarn. I used um, Bisha Bouche. Okay. But, uh, petite lamb's wool and it's mohair. So mm-hmm. it's like the dark green. I've been in, you know me, I like fall colors. So the olive and dark forest greens, I like that. And then this is just a beige. And so the rim here is 
the two held together. And then my favorite, the slip stitches to make the pattern mm -hmm. on the body of the hat. So that's my hat. I still have to weave in the ends though, but yeah. Yeah, whatever. It's and a hat, who's gonna see it? It'll just like felt together eventually. Exactly, I mean, the last hat that I made, I didn't weave in the ends on that one either. And I'm still saying, oh, I need to weave in the ends. So yeah, it's cute. I've worn it a few times since I finished it actually. Um, and it's nice and lightweight, but it's warm. Like, mm -hmm. I got, it was raining and chilly. Was that yesterday? Um, yeah. it felt really nice. So yeah, I can show you the yarn. It didn't, I didn't use much of the yarn at all. So I still have all of this left. Oh, nice. So you could either do another hat or maybe some mittens or something with that. Yeah. yeah. I'd love to just do something where I hold both together the whole time. Mm -hmm. Like it would be kind of like a marling, huh? Mm -hmm. That's what's so wait, is the mohair? So the mohair is, it's the green. together here, it's the green. Okay. And then it's the slip stitch here. Um, and so what I did was I held my mohair double because I wanted this to be more <laughs> pronounced. Um, and in the pattern, she says, you can tr you just experiment, it, experiment with it when you swatch and all of that. But so yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, I was thinking it was mohair and the lamp petite lambswool held up like a white mohair and white petite lambswool and a green mohair and green petite uh, wool. Okay. It's mild. It's mild, mild down there. Yep. Yeah. That's my hat. Nice. Well, I have a hat too. Yay. Um, I finished uh, Alata. Oh. And I have my hair up, so it's going to be questionable to put it on, but I'll try it. Oh, wait, I should put mine on, too. OK, well, we'll put, put yours on, and we'll do hat cam. Okay. <laughs> Yay, yours really matches your shirt that you're wearing today really well, too. Kind of. Hey, this looks weird, though. <laughs> It's yeah. hard to put a hat on. on today. Okay. Exactly. I got to actually style it, but yeah. <laughs> um, so I don't know if you're going to be able to see it. You actually probably, I should, we'll be able to see it better if I take it off. So it has that, those really nice, um, can you see that or is the light in here just too bad? I can see it. Okay. Right there. Uh, Good. It has those really nice twisted stitches. Um, you guys have seen Wanda made a gold version of this about a year ago, which speaking of, we realized that we're either coming up on or have just passed or something is going on with a year anniversary. Yeah, because <laughs> it was November, we started in November. So we'll have to check the date and we'll report back, but it's about a year. Yeah. <laughs> it's so crazy. So crazy. So every year we like to make an Alata hat. That's basically the, the point of this. <laughs> And I love it. Um, the yarn is um, Imperial Yarns Tracy 2, which is just a nice woolly wool. It's sport weight, so I added a few extra stitches in each repeat to make it work. And yeah, I'm super happy with it. And this was one of those things that was on the needles forever, and I cleared the needles. Got it done. <laughs> nice. Oh. What else do you have? Yeah, so I'll share my, I have two pairs of socks. Um, so I'll just share both of those really quickly. Um, speaking of clearing the needles, finishing these socks made me feel like I was clearing the needles. So definitely, <laughs> these are my now and next. There are two here. Oh, wait, did you get a sock blocker? I made this. <laughs> How did you make it? It's just a hanger. I had one wire hanger. <laughs> And I made this and you see it doesn't, it looks a little, a little weird, but yeah. Oh my gosh, I love it. What a, I think I have some wire hangers like left over from the dry cleaner. It's so I easy to that. do. So anyway, yeah. So these are the now and next socks. I've also, I've been wearing these. I, you know, I just couldn't wait. They're really comfortable. They're a pattern by Mars Hay Brownberry. Um, and I knit these with Patton's Croy FX. 
mm -hmm. FX and with a 1.5 child glue needle. And I love them. I actually posted them in the Falling Leaves Sock Cow that Marcin and Denise, Denise of um, Earth Tones Girl, they're mm -hmm. hosting. It ends tomorrow on Sunday. So I posted them. And when I went to post them, I noticed that someone else made these same exact socks with the same exact <laughs> yarn. So I was like, this <laughs> isn't that original. Um, but yeah, mm, I think that's it. I look forward to buying some more patterns, Corey yarn, I think. It's the way to go. And that weight is good to me. I know you said your feet sometimes overheat with that, but I liked it. And I did the Finchley graft again um, to close those out. So nice. those are a gift for me. That's right. Everybody needs a gift for themselves sometimes. There you go. And then... Oh, nice. The first Christmas socks off the needles. I finished the gift for someone else. So if you've been watching, these are a gift for my partner's son, um, the oldest one. And so his favorite color is orange. And they're all done. Stripey socks. The yarn is by Fibrelia. I knit these two at a time. That was my first time knitting two at a time. Regular um, slip stitch heel gusset heel flap <laughs> and mm -hmm. yeah I did contrasting heel and toe on these so these are done and I need to I started the other day I don't know if it was yesterday casting on the other pair and I was in the car and I was like I'm gonna have to cast these on later I forgot how to cast on two <laughs> oh, no 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 you anyway I don't need to go yeah. it. well in the car that would be hard too because I feel like it's fiddly and you're like dealing with the cord it's I wouldn't fiddly. hurt you so I stuffed it in the glove compartment and said <laughs> I'll just come back to that but yeah and then I forgot to mention that these were knit this was knit on a US3 okay and I use my clovers the bamboo needles yay top. clovers yep old faithful can't yeah. believe that Definitely. But you did, you do have fancy sock blockers on those. Yes. I bought some as well. <laughs> I made some, I made one and I bought some. I was, I was going to make a bunch and I was like, oh, I actually only have one wire finger yeah. in my house. What's going on? Now I'm having sock blocker FOMO because I have some socks to share, but no sock blockers. Womp womp. Oh, You're well. The, um, um, well, I finished uh, my socks for the twins. Yeah. So two pairs of little shorties. Um, so these are just a basic vanilla shorty sock. This is Knit Picks Felici in Jamboree. Um, and this is Knit Picks Felici in Limeade. And then the white is just a Cascade sock yarn. Um, yeah, so I'm really happy with these. They came out really cute. They are, what a precious gift. Yeah. So I think they'll like those, hopefully. Yeah. Um, and then I finished my crochet blanket. What? Let's see if I can show it. Very impressive. Oh. It's about the same size as the other one, actually. I feel like if I would have really wanted a good adult size blanket, I should have used all the yarn from both blankets to make one giant blanket. But um, anyways, yeah, so this is the pattern is called the Mustard Granny Square Blanket by, um, or yeah, by Amanda Hurl. And it's Debbie Bliss Cash Merino Erin. And it's just basically a giant granny square with a little pico border. I feel like you finished that so quickly. Yeah, I did. I focused a lot on it maybe this week or last week. I can't remember exactly. I wove in the ends yesterday, but <laughs> I've had it done for a while. And it's, I don't know why it smells really good. I, I can't figure out why because I didn't have anything <laughs> especially good smelling in the bag with it. But. Yeah. Well Anyways, so I'm super happy with that. I think this will probably just go in the gift bin for some time when there's a baby that needs it. Yeah. But um, yeah, it was really fun just to crochet around and around and around. And I'm really glad I took the time to rip out the first try and actually plan out the colors. Like I had made a, a list of 
So the colors are like kind of random, but not really because I planned it. Yep. <laughs> but, it um, good. I like yeah. the pattern you have going on. Um, so then I have one more. So I finished that and then so on Tuesday of this week, the heat wasn't working in our building. So I live in an older apartment building that was built in the 40s and we have basically like the original heating system from 1942 or whatever. Yeah. And so it, it's like always out at the beginning of the winter. So it was, it, it doesn't get that cold here, but it probably got down to like 45 degrees overnight. So I was really cold all day on Tuesday and was like grumbling and complaining. And I had on my, like my fingerless mitts and whatever. So after I got done with work, I was like, I'm making some cozy socks. And I went like tearing through my stash to find something to make cozy socks with. And I made these. They're wonderful. Um, so I just grabbed this green yarn is some leftover. Um, I have from some other socks I had made. It's the Fawn and the Fox Badger. The color is Mojito. And then some blue Cascade and then a skein of Knit Picks Aloft in the color Iceberg, which is kind of like a bluish green mohair. You can't really, all you can tell there is that it's fuzzy, but yeah. anyway. Um, so yeah, I just, these whipped up super fast because they're basically DK weight. So I just cast on 52 stitches and improvised. I love the color combo and the yeah. stitches in that yarn. It's really pretty. And I ran out of this greenish yarn at the very, very end of the second one. So you can kind of just barely see there. I had another yarn that looked kind of similar that I had oh, to do yeah. of and tell more on the foot. But yeah, I mean, it doesn't really matter. You don't really notice it when you're wearing it. Is there a nylon in that yarn? The, yeah, I mean, all the, the sock yarn, yeah, has nylon. This green is BFL nylon, I think. And then the blue is merino nylon. Because you said those are DK weight, right? Well, it's fingering held with the mohair. Oh, so that's about a DK okay. gauge. I got it. Yeah. But I realized the child thing I didn't really think about is I don't really know how I would wash these. I guess I'm going to have to wash them by hand because of the mohair. Mm -hmm. So that's not really that practical. But anyway, okay. I can wear them to be cozy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so I knit these on a size two needle. And usually I knit socks on a size zero. So a couple mm -hmm. sizes up from. So yeah. Nice. About nice cozy hair. Yeah. <laughs> nice and cozy. Sorry about my weird light now. You're getting like this. So you can see that I yeah, have. <laughs> I think the, the timing <laughs> is throwing us off with the lighting because it's getting it's getting wonky over here too. So we'll just plan for that next time. Yeah. So what have you been working on after you finished I just off? have, I've only been working on one whip and I'll show an update really quickly. Um, so this is the Montrealer. It's another gift knit. If I was making it for myself, I would be done with the body, <laughs> but um, it's really dark. So I don't know if you can see, but I have, these stitch markers on here mm -hmm. and that basically um is where the pocket the top of the pocket starts mm, okay so i have to i'll continue to knit down and then the next step it's hard to see because it's black yeah um but i'll knit down and you attach the pockets before you do the ribbing at the bottom so that's my progress here. It's coming along. Even though it's hard to see, we can definitely tell that you've made a lot of progress. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are the pockets the same color or are they a contrast color? This is going to be an all black sweater. So the pattern, I think I have it nearby. Oh wait, it's right here. It's designed to be a striped sweater. Okay. So it's by Vincent. But I'm basically using this pattern because we like the style and the cut mm -hmm. to make an all black sweater. Okay. On the, but the pocket there is, it's the same as the sweater anyway. Looks like there the pocket yeah, is. Yeah, it is. 
it, it's in pattern. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Nice. And then there's a hood on there. Yeah. Exciting. So I think you're going to have that done in time. I am. I'm feeling good about it. Yeah. The goal is to cast on the next pair of socks by the start of December, but I probably will cast it on sooner. Um, and work on those and work on this. And I'll, I'll, have, I'll have them all done. I feel confident I'll have them all done. Yeah. Yay. That reminds me, I almost forgot about my other FO. Mm. And I know exactly what you're talking about. Because yes. I don't have it here. My mom's sweater. I finished my mom's sweater. Congratulations. <laughs> Um, so I don't have it here because I already sent it to her, but she did send me a picture of her wearing it. So let me go grab my phone and I'll show that. Yep. Um, I can't believe I almost forgot about that. <laughs> and she was, she's happy with it. Yeah, she is. She's happy with it. It fits her more or less perfectly. So it was quite a, um, travail <laughs> as you guys know, I was so worried it wasn't going to fit when I, so after our last episode, all I had to do was just the neckband. So I did that the next morning because I needed natural light to do it. And then I um, woven the ends and blocked, or actually maybe I blocked it first and then woven the ends because I was so worried it wasn't going to be the right size. Anyways, but I pinned it out. I blocked it really aggressively and like measured multiple times to get it to be the right measurements. Mm -hmm. And it fits perfectly. So she said we could show the picture of her wearing it. Can you see that? Yeah, she looks beautiful. Yeah. It's a good so You can, yeah, I'm so pleased with it. It looks great on her. She looks great in it. And finally, after all the years of making sweaters, it didn't really fit her right. Yay! Yes. <laughs> it's been a long time coming. It's been a journey. So I'm really excited when she, I sent it. And then when she got it, she sent me a Zoom invite and hopped on to show me that it fit. And so, yay, I was very relieved. Awesome. <laughs> very nice. So anyway, that's my, I'm not actually really doing many gift knits this year. I mean, you when you do gift knits, you really do gift knits. Yeah. So I feel like for you, it's all in or, or <laughs> nothing. <laughs> But, uh, and what about you all? Is anyone, I think some of our folks in the Ralvary groups have been sharing gift knits, but let us know if you're knitting any gifts and how you're balancing that with knitting for yourself these days as we get deeper and deeper into the holiday season. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be great to see those. I feel like I don't want it. One year I was saying I wasn't going to do gift knits and then I wasn't going to do it. And then December 1st, all of a sudden I had this flurry and I knit like 15 hats in December, but I don't feel that coming on this year. Yeah. <laughs> I remember that. We'll see. <laughs> we'll be able to go back to the podcast and say, hmm. <laughs> famous last uh, words. Famous, yeah, right. <laughs> Are you working on anything else? Yeah, I just have two things. So, um, I did start the coastal crop. Oh yeah. Um, and I actually meant to write down, I'm so sorry, I forgot to write down your name, but um, somebody in our Ravelry group had messaged me um, and said, hey, I have yarn for this. Tell me when you're gonna start. Maybe we can knit along together. Mm -hmm. And so I thought that was a fantastic idea. And so we messaged back and forth a little bit and I posted a thread in the Ravelry group if anyone else is interested in knitting this with us. Um, so this is the Coastal Crop Raglan um, and it's by Tip Nealon and I'm knitting it with Knit Picks City Tweed DK um, and the color that I'm using is Blue Blood. Um, That's going to be nice. Yeah. Color. And I believe um, our friend in the Ravelry group who's also knitting it is knitting it with a also City Tweed DK, but in a blue. Um, so it looks really nice. Um, so anyway, um, it's kind of hard to show because I'm doing the yoke and it's bunched up on the needles. But basically, so far I have just the yoke and it has a little eyelet detail here that might be a little hard to see. Mm. Eyelets right there. And I'm just about ready to split for the sleeves. 
So yeah, you made progress on that pretty quickly. It goes pretty fast because it's a, I forget exactly what the gauge is, but it's like 24 stitches or 22 stitches or something over four inches. Oh, 18 stitches over four inches. So it's a pretty big gauge. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I'm happy with it. I actually stopped because I think I might, I was planning to do one size larger and I think I decided I actually should do the next size down. And so I need to put it on a piece of waste yarn and make sure it's actually the right size before Got it. I keep going. Um, so yeah, and then the only other thing that I did is just when I finished the socks uh, for the twins, I cast on just a quick spiral sock um, using the leftovers of both of the colors. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Um, oh, cool. So we'll see, just because I didn't have any other socks and I just needed a little oh, something. But... I'm excited about those. <laughs> yeah, I am too. And I actually feel like we'll see when I finish them, but I feel like this might be the new way to use Felici. Yeah. Right, to combine two wanna, Yeah, I, I look forward yeah. to seeing how those come out. Oh, yeah. That's really cool. Um, they had a sale, Knit Picks was, was having a sale, yeah. I, you got, oh yeah, oh yeah, you told me about it. <laughs> and we both, you got sucked in and I kind of got sucked in. Yeah, I did, I saw, well, I went on there because I did go on there for a reason and I forget why I had gone on there. I was looking for something specific and then I was like 60% off, what? <laughs> so then of course I texted you and I was like, that makes us out like a sale. That's how they get us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, cool. Anyway. Yeah, so that's it. What are your plans? So you said you're working on the socks and the sweater. Anything else you have coming up? You know, I am just taking it one project at a time as the spirit moves me. Because I realized that I'll say at the end of the, the podcast, oh, I'm going to work on this. So I want to work on this. And then that changes pretty much the next day. So I don't want to get ahead of myself. I feel like I'm somewhat clearing the needles and like I do this thing where I pace myself so I finish one thing or one milestone in a project and then I'm like oh you can pick this up or you can cast this on right so when I finish the body of the sweater for example then I'll probably cast something else on but that's where I am so the other socks the other gift socks I'm going to work on this one and then probably return to my favo mm -hmm. And I want to get another, I'm fine with having two pairs of socks on the needles at the same time. So I want to get another pair of socks for me on the needles. Yeah. Um, and there are so many tops that I, I there are so many things I want to make. So I can, it would be a laundry list if I tried to run through them. So just, we'll see. Um, at the top of the list is still the heirloom sweater and then I've had yarn for a while to make the cozy classic raglan. And now that we're in fall, I'm just feeling like, oh, I wish I had it already. It would be the perfect mm -hmm. sweater, like just casual sweater. So we'll see. Yeah. Yeah, I was wearing my, um, actually the day I decided to make the mohair socks, it was because I was wearing my, um, this thing, what's it called? <sighs> my petite knits. Oh. Yeah. No frills, right? I was wearing this and I was like, I need this on my feet. It's a, exactly. It's a perfect go to see. Oh, God. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I want one. I want the cozy plastic raglan. The other thing that I was thinking about was the rug mm -hmm. by Junko Okamoto because as it's so, this season is really exciting. <laughs> like, it's actually <laughs> chilly enough for the. Right? Yeah. So I'm like, that's another one that's perfect because I've gone out several times, particularly in the evenings where it's like, all you need is a nice cozy sweater. To, mm -hmm. it's, it's comforting, it's cozy, and you know, you're proud of it too because you've made it. So that's something else that's on my radar. I don't know if we ever shared with folks when we both 
the story in the book. We've that mentioned it before. <laughs> Should we tell the whole story? It's kind of funny. I don't know. I want to tell the whole story. <laughs> well, so the abridged version of the story is that we both got totally obsessed with the rug and I had yarn in my stash that I thought would work for it. So I pulled it out and cast it on and started like going like gangbusters. And you, did you actually buy yarn? Yes. And yeah. I cast it on and started as well. I didn't yeah. get very far. I think you got into the Japanese short rows because I remember you yeah. said you had to learn how to do those, right? Yeah. And I do, I was thinking about that when I was doing the short rows on this actually, that I really like though I, I don't know how to I don't have memorized how to do them but I think they're actually my favorite way to do it in terms of how it looks in the end so I need to go back and look at that pattern but anyway um, so long story short is that the project got abandoned by both of us for me it was because the yarn I was using I had gotten it at the secondhand craft store and I think it had lanolin in it still that had gone off so it like smelled basically rotten <laughs> And I was like knitting and I kept thinking like, why does it, what smells so bad in here? And then I was like, oh, it's this yarn. And I was just like, I probably could have washed it or something and saved it. But I was like, it cost me like $10. I can't <laughs> just yeah, like exactly. literally there took this one off the needles and threw it all in the trash. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was the moment. Yeah. <laughs> um, so you may see the rug. You yeah. may see the rug and it, it, it might come, it might come. But yeah, let us know what you all are working on. Um, this is an exciting season for knitting. Fall is my favorite season, um, you know, particularly being from New York, but out here as well, it's starting to feel like fall. So let us know what you're working on either for yourself or your family, friends, et cetera. Um, and what sort of knit state of mind it's bringing you these days. Yeah, and don't forget to tag. Um, we have Clear the Needles still going on. We always forget to make <laughs> so cl And Clear the Needles goes until December 31st. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm down to, I have two whips from 2019 that are both pretty close to being done. And then I actually, I thought I was gonna get down to single digits, but then I cast those socks on. So now I have 10 whips. So you've been on a roll. You're doing really well. You yeah. Are. And then um, the winter ready make along is going strong. People have been posting a lot, um, a lot of inspiring projects in the Ravelry thread that goes until December 21st. It's interesting because both are ending around the same time, but mm -hmm. we'll, we'll figure it out. And yeah. Yeah. And then doing the coastal crop, I, there is a thread in the Ravelry group um, for that. I haven't been doing too much either on Instagram or Ravelry the last couple of weeks, but I am going to post a picture of my progress. So please post there. And I also um, post it on Instagram and the hashtag is impromptu coastal crop cal. So that's a great <laughs> hashtag. It's an awesome hashtag. All right. Well, well <laughs> well, thanks for watching. Um, we really appreciate all the love that you send us every week in the comments. And we look forward to seeing you again in three weeks or so. So we'll see you later. And if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and do that. So you <laughs> get the alerts and know when a new video is up. All right. Bye, everyone. Bye.